We're going to go over what similar matrices are. We'll see and prove some of the important properties that similar matrices have, and we'll finish with a couple of computational examples observing that two matrices are similar and showing that some matrices are not similar. So, if A and P are n by n matrices and P is invertible, then we would say that transforming A into P inverse times A times P is a similarity transformation because we say the matrix A is similar to P inverse AP. This is a similarity transformation because really these two matrices, A and P inverse AP, are quite similar. There are many important properties that these two matrices will have in common. Any property like this that doesn't change after a similarity transformation is called a similarity invariant. So if you have two similar matrices, a similarity invariant will be a property common to both of them. Here's a list of some similarity invariants. You can see it contains many of the most important properties of matrices we've discussed so far. The determinant of similar matrices is the same. Invertibility is also shared between similar matrices. Either they're both invertible or they're both not invertible. The rank of similar matrices is the same. The nullity is the same. The trace of similar matrices is the same. The characteristic polynomial of similar matrices is the same, and hence so are the eigenvalues. Also, the dimension of the eigenspaces of corresponding eigenvalues is the same as well between similar matrices. Matrices. Just explaining this last one again because it's kind of long, like we said, similar matrices have the same eigenvalues, and each eigenvalue has a corresponding eigenspace, and the eigenspaces between the similar matrices that correspond to the same eigenvalue will have the same dimension. Let's quickly go through proofs of these first two properties that they are similarity invariants, and I'll leave a link in the description to a video where we prove the rest of them if you're interested. Let's begin with the determinant. So consider the determinant of P inverse AP. This is a matrix that's similar to A. Now, the determinant of a product of matrices, as we've previously proven, is the product of the determinants. So, this determinant equals the determinant of P inverse times the determinant of A times the determinant of P. But we've also previously proven that the determinant of an inverse matrix is just the reciprocal of the determinant of the original matrix. So, determinant of P inverse equals 1 over the determinant of P. Then, 1 over the determinant of P and the determinant of P cancel out, and we are left with the determinant of A. So, the determinant of A is equal to the determinant of P inverse AP. Determinant is a similarity invariant. Invertibility is also an easy proof. Let's begin by assuming A is invertible. Then, we want to prove that P inverse AP is invertible. Well, if A is invertible, then P inverse AP is a product of invertible matrices. We've previously proven that a product of invertible matrices is also invertible. So if A is invertible, P inverse AP is also invertible. We know that A is invertible because that was assumed, and of course P inverse doesn't make any sense unless we've assumed that P is invertible. A can't be similar to this unless P, and hence P inverse as well, are both invertible. On the other hand, if we assume P inverse AP is invertible, well then suppose we multiply this on the left by P and on the right by P inverse. Then this here is again a product of invertible matrices, but what is it equal to? Well P and P inverse cancel out, and P and P inverse cancel out, so in fact, this product of invertible matrices is equal to A. Since A is equal to a product of invertible matrices, we have that A is invertible. So indeed, a matrix is in invertible if and only if a similar matrix is invertible. So invertibility is a similarity invariant. 
Again, we introduced this idea as a function, a similarity transformation, transforming the matrix A into this similar matrix, P inverse AP. But let's also write out the definition for similar matrices. So not thinking about this as a function, we could define it like this. If A and B are square matrices, we say that A is similar to B if there exists an invertible matrix P so that P inverse AP equals B. So any matrix that is in this form is a matrix A is similar to. But it's important to note there's not really a direction to this relationship. So if P inverse AP equals B, well then letting Q equal P inverse we could also write that Q inverse BQ equals A. Let's quickly justify that. B is equal to this. So then if Q equals P inverse, if we multiply this on the left by Q inverse, that would just be P. And if we multiply it on the right by Q, well, that would just be P inverse. And so we can see how these things would cancel out and just leave A behind. So we're able to write A in this form, Q inverse BQ. So not only is A similar to B, but we see that implies B is similar to A. Since this sort of relationship is symmetric, we may say simply that A and B are similar rather than saying one similar to the other. And on a similar note, let's prove transitivity. If A is similar to B and B is similar to C, then it's also the case that A is similar to C. So if A is similar to B, then we can write this. And if B is similar to C, we can write this. Note that the Q in this example is totally different from the Q in the example we just went over. This is a new situation. So A is similar to B, B is similar to C. Then we can also express A in this sort of form. So taking B in the equation for A and replacing it with this expression, we get this product. We have some stuff times C times some stuff. But this stuff on the left, P inverse Q inverse, that's the same as QP inverse. This stuff on the right, of course, is just QP. And so we see that we're able to write A in this form, a matrix inverse times C times the matrix. And so A is similar to C. A and C are similar. And so we see that the transitivity property is satisfied for this relation. We'll finish with a couple of examples. Let's begin with this one. We're going to show that A and B are similar matrices by showing B equals P inverse AP. So the matrices A, B, and P are given to us. We'll just have to do some matrix multiplication, but first we'll need to find P inverse. Since P is a two by two matrix, finding its inverse is pretty straightforward. We'll need to divide everything by the determinant and the determinant we see is just one. So we'll divide everything by the determinant and then negate the entries on the counter diagonal. And that looks like this. That's your review on finding the inverse of a two by two matrix, divide everything by the determinant and negate the counter diagonal. Again, the determinant is one, so that didn't really change anything here. All right, we have P, we have P inverse. Now we can simply do the multiplication to verify the claimed similarity. P inverse times A times P is the product of these three matrices. Let's say we multiply P inverse and A first. Then we would have 2 plus 1, giving us 3. Then we would have negative 2 minus 3, giving us negative 5. Then we would have negative 1, seen there. Then we would have positive 3, seen there. So now we have this matrix multiplied by P on the end. If you do that multiplication, you can verify we get this matrix here, which is precisely the matrix B. So we see that there is a matrix P, so that P inverse AP equals B. Hence, by definition, a and B are similar matrices. Showing these two matrices are similar it was pretty easy, 
specifically because we were given the matrix P up front. Showing two matrices aren't similar is generally going to be easier because we can just find a similarity invariant that they don't share. So here are three pairs of not similar matrices. See if you can find a similarity invariant in each example that's not common between the matrices. That will suffice to prove that they aren't similar. Beginning with this first example, we see that the determinant of matrix A is negative 6, whereas the determinant of matrix B is positive 6. Determinant is a similarity invariant, so because these two matrices have a different determinants, they can't possibly be similar. What about this second example? Well, in matrix A, we can see that rows 1 and 2 are not linearly independent. Row 2 is 2 times row 1. Hence, the rank of matrix A is 1. On the other hand, the rows of matrix B are linearly independent, and so its rank is 2. Rank is a similarity invariant. If two matrices are similar, they have to have the same rank. These two matrices do not have the same rank, hence they can't be similar. In this third example, we have 3x3 three three matrices, however, it's pretty easy to calculate their determinant. This matrix is an upper triangular matrix, so its determinant is just the product of its diagonal entries, which happens to be 1. In this matrix, we can find its determinant easily by using a cofactor expansion along the third row. That's going to end up being 15 minus negative 4, so 19. So determinant of 1, determinant of 19, the determinants are not the same, so the matrices cannot be similar. So that's an easy way to verify if two matrices are not similar. Just find a similarity invariant that they don't have in common. So that's an introduction to similar matrices and some of their properties. Quickly, I want to mention where we are going with this, and where we are going is something called diagonalization. So a diagonal matrix we've seen is really nice. There's a lot of important properties that are super easy to calculate for diagonal matrices. So, if we can show that a matrix is similar to some diagonal matrix, we could find a lot of its important properties very easily from that diagonal matrix. The process we're going to talk about to go from one matrix to a similar diagonal matrix is called diagonalization. So be sure to check out my Linear Algebra course playlist in the description for more and so you don't miss that. You can also check out my Linear Algebra exercises playlist for more practice. And if you find my videos helpful, please consider supporting what I do by joining Wrath of Math as a channel member. You can get access to early and exclusive videos, as well as access to these lecture notes if you join at the premium tier or above. Thanks a lot for watching. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about. Stressed out, honey, I've been stressed out lately. Don't know what's what, don't know what I'm stressed about. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about.